Welcome to session 2.2, day three. Polynomial functions, graphing and modeling data. Today's objectives are to graph polynomial functions by hand and to model real world data with polynomial functions. First thing we're gonna do is graph a polynomial function using things we've learned in section 2.2. So we have this function f of x equals two x multiplied by x plus one in parentheses multiplied by x minus two squared so we want to apply the leading term test first to determine our end behavior. And then we're going to determine the zeros and multiplicity of our repeated zeros. And after that, we're going to fix some points, which will be on the next slide, and we'll graph from that. So first, the leading term test. If we were to multiply this thing together, we would end up having 2x times x, and then the last part, that binomial squared, would have an x squared in it. So our leading term would have 2x to the 4th. And we're going to use this 2x to the 4th to do determine our end behavior and what our graph should look like. So the first thing is end behavior. Since this has a power of 4, it's an even power, it's going to resemble a quadratic. We have a leading coefficient that's positive, so it will be going up on both ends, just like the quadratic would. So we have to do our end behavior, the limit as x approaches negative infinity for our left end of f of x is infinity. And the limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x is also going to infinity. Remember, whenever we do end behavior, we must use limit notation when we're doing this. All right, next we're going to determine our zeros. And if there's any multiplicity, for any repeated zeros. So first our zeros, the 2x, our zero is gonna be zero for that first factor. The second factor is gonna have a zero of negative one. And our third one will have a zero of two, and this has a multiplicity of two because it's a binomial squared. So this solution happens twice. Now, if you recall, when we talked about multiplicity the other day, if we have an even multiplicity, we are only going to touch the x-axis at that point. So in this case, we have a multiplicity of 2. We are just going to touch. And we have what we call tangent. This curve will be have a tangent. The x-axis is tangent to the curve at 2. If we have an odd multiplicity like 3 or 5 or 7, we are going to cross the x-axis at that point. And we need to use these for when we actually graph our equation. So we have this function again, same function we've been working with. We already know our zeros are 0, negative 1, and 2 with a multiplicity of 2. We need to find additional points so we can graph our equation. So we want to do additional points. We, put, we want to find points between our zeros. Let me set the graph up first, and we'll see where the zeros are. All right, so our zeros are at negative 1, 0, and 2. We're going to use these. We want to find another x value between the zeros. Well, between negative 1 and 0, the best one to probably use is negative half. So we're going to see what happens at negative 0 0.5. So we're going to plug it into our function. And if you do this, you get back negative 3.125. So zero po negative 0 0.5 is going to go down negative 3. So it's going to be right around in here. Then we're going to do one between our next zeros, between one, 0 and 2. So the halfway between is 1. Generally, halfway between is a good number to use. Just use good integer values if you can find an integer. The first one, I couldn't use an integer. So I used halfway between. Otherwise, try to use integer values. We are just looking for the shape. So f of 1, if you plug it into the, to the function, we'll go to 2 times 2 times 1, which is 4. We plot 1 goes to 4. So we now have points we can use to draw a sketch of our graph. What we want to do with this is we know the end behavior on the left side comes from goes up to positive infinity. So we're going to start up high. We're going to come down to our first 0. We're going to go through it. We're going to get down to that low point turn back around, go back up to the zero, 
do the origin, go up to 1.14, come back down to our zero at two, and we're going to barely touch it, and then going to bounce back off. And our curve looks something like this. Made it a little sharper than I should have, but it's a curve. This one resembles a W like you would expect because it's a power of four. And this is what graphing a polynomial function, how we do it. We use a leading term to find our end behaviors. We find our zeros. We use multiplicity and our zeros. We pot a couple other points so we know what our shape looks like. And we draw a sketch. This is not a perfect graph but it gives you an idea of what the graph looks like. And a lot of times we just want to know what it looks like. You have a feeling for what the graph is doing. All right, so let's move on to the next part of today's lesson. The next part today, we are going to be using uh, polynomial functions to model data. So this one, it says the number of fruit flies that hatched after day X is given in the table. Write a polynomial function to model the data set. Round each coefficient to the nearest hundredth and state the correlation coefficient. Use the model to estimate the number of fruit flies hatched after eight days. We're doing polynomial function modeling. So we're going to see what this thing looks like when we put in a stat plot and then our scatter plot. We'll see what the data looks like and then we'll pick a function off of that. All right, so I have to change order my calculator. So I will plug this data into my calculator and show you how to do that again. And then we'll go from there. All right, so here we go. We got to put our data in. First, I need to go to stat. Need to go to edit. Put in our lists. All right, so once we have our data in our table, I'll make sure I have my numbers right. And I do. We are going to do, uh, we want to do a stat plot to see what the data looks like. So I want to make sure my stat plot is on. You go to second, under Y, every stat plot. We're going to turn the plot on, so we have to hit enter. Make sure the flasher is over on, hit enter again. And now my stat plot is turned on. Notice my stat plot has lists one and two, which is where I put my data. From here, I always recommend you use zoom stat to do a scatter plot because it will give you a good window to look at and it'll have all your data points included. So do zoom, go down to option nine, zoom stat, or just type in nine, and there is my scatter plot. Looking at our scatter plot, this looks like a exponential growth model. So we will do exponential growth on this one. So we go to stat and calculate. Scroll down to exponential growth, exponential regression, sorry. And it's gonna be option zero, if I remember correct. It is, hit enter. We are going to want to store our equation, so we make sure our lists are correct. We are in list one and two. We want to store our regression equation, so we hit VARS. And then from VARS, we go to Y VARS. Under function, hit enter. Select where you want to put it. I usually put it in Y1. Once you have that in, hit enter again, hit enter calculate, and we get this. 189.6019 and then 2.664 and our R value is 0 0.977. And if you recall, if we have an R value close to one, it means our model is very close to what the data is actually showing us. So this is a good model for the data we have. All right, so when we go back to the slide here, I will write my equation. We use the first three decimal places. So let's go back to our slides. So our equation we would have from the, what we had on our calculator was 189.602 and then times 2.664 all raised to the x power. This is my model. And remember our R value says that this model does represent the data. All right, the next part of this thing says, use the model to estimate the number of fruit flies hatched after eight days. So I recommend you use the equation that's on your calculator that you stored. So let me get out of here. Now back in our calculator, we have our stored, uh, the equation is stored. So if you wanted to see what your graph looked like, you could hit the graph button. 
and it'll show you that the graph, the curve we created, is pretty close to what our data points are. And if you want to see what's happening at 8, I think the easiest way to do this, for this one, if you tried to do 8, the data is so big, notice that this one only goes to 1. So we're going to be off of our graph, so we have to use a table. You can make your window bigger also, but this number is going to get really large really fast. So we want to go to the table. So hit second, table, and let's scroll up to eight. You can change your table set if you want, but mine's not too bad. And you'll notice that big number there, 481,301. So what it tells us on this problem is that we have 481,301 fruit flies after eight days. That's how fast the population grows. We actually use fruit flies for science experiments for this reason, because we can do genetic experiments with them because they repopulate so fast and they can see what's happening between the different generations as they tweak different genes. Now we have another set of data that we're going to put into our calculators. So put year one, uh, put the years in list one, put the population in list two, and then we will do a scatter plot from this. and try to see what function would represent the data. All right, so let's do that. Let me pause now while I put this stuff in my calculator and while we resume. All right, next we want to do is go to plot our data. So go to zoom. We now have our data in our table in our list one and list two. We want to do a zoom stat so we can see what our scatter plot looks like. So option nine, there is my zoom stat. And now we want to look at this and see what this looks like. What, does we, what do we think the modeling, what type of polynomial function would model this data best? Well, we know we have a nice peak in right above about three. You see that nice peak at the beginning, then it goes down and it's hard to tell. It looks like it flattens out and then goes down some more. So it looks like we probably have two turning points. And if we have two turning points, that means we have to have a power of three and a power of three is cubic. So it looks like it could be cubic. So we're going to go to stat, we're going to go to calculate, and we're going to go down to cubic regression, which is option six. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do our list one and list two is in. We want to store our equation into y1. So we do vars, go over to y vars, hit enter for function, select what you want to store it, and hit enter. Hit enter again for calculate, and it gives us these numbers back. We have 10.020, we have negative 176.320, we have 807.469 if we run it to the third decimal, and then our D, our constant at the end is 44, 54, and then 786. This is stored. We have an R, R squared data point. It's sort of the same thing as the R for regression, and this one's at 0 0.89, which shows our data is very close to a cubic. So a cubic it very closely resembles this data. So we have our equation. I'm going to go back to the other slide here, and we'll come back to the calculator in a minute. Actually, let me graph this first so you can see the graph. So we should graph it to see if it represents the data pretty well, and you'll notice the curve does go through the data points rather well. So now that we've done this, uh, one of those things that will stay on your slide when we go back to it. Let me see if I can get back to the slide here. All right, so we have this part. I'm going to go to the next slide if it lets me switch. Okay, there's our equation. And then it says, use the model to determine the approximate year in which the population reaches 10,712. So I go back to my calculator. And there's a couple of different ways to do this. I'm gonna to go to the table and see roughly when my data gets this 10,712 area. So we just scroll down our table and see if we get there. This one will eventually get there because I did this earlier. And you'll notice mine says 10,713 in year 15. For whatever reason, when I do it on my calculator, that other calculator I use, I get a different, my numbers are just a little bit off because of rounding that the calculators do. Uh, so 10,713, we're looking for 10,712. Um, so at year 15 is when we reach this many.
for this population that we're looking at. So in 2015 is when we get our data. So this is doing uh, polynomial regressions on your calculator. We'll go back to the slides again. So today we graphed using stuff we've learned in section 2.2, and then we worked on polynomial regressions. Putting this in the calculator, using your zoom stat, plotting them, seeing what curve represents the data, what you could use, and then using that regression model off your calculations in the stat menu. And then writing our equations and making uh, predictions from that. So that is what you'll be doing on your assignment today. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.